Hey there. I'm Emily, just an average American girl with a bit of wanderlust. So, let me spill the tea on my trip to Japan. It's a roller coaster, but totally worth it. First things first, I'm from a little town in the Midwest where everyone knows everyone. I work a 9 to 5 gig at a local bookstore, surrounded by the smell of old books and coffee stains on the floor. Not the most glamorous, but it pays the bills. Journey One afternoon, I got a surprise invitation from my friend Hiroshi in Japan, who I would met through a language exchange. He told me his family would love to host me, and how could I say no? So, I handed in my leave notice, packed my bags, and off I went. Journey begins. I arrived at the airport, my heart pounding with excitement. The check-in desk was busy. As I approached the counter, the airline attendant smiled and asked for my passport and ticket. May I have your passport and ticket, please? She asked kindly. I handed them over, and she quickly processed everything. All set, she said, handing me back my passport along with the boarding pass. Enjoy your flight to Tokyo. Thanks. I waved as I headed to security. Boarding the plane. After clearing security, I headed toward the gate. The flight attendants were getting ready for boarding, and the announcement came through. Ladies and gentlemen, please prepare to board for Flight 302 to Tokyo. We will be boarding by rows shortly. As I found my seat, one of the air hostesses, a bubbly woman with a bright smile, greeted me. Welcome aboard. Can I get you anything to drink before we take off? I smiled, feeling a bit nervous. Just some water, thanks. Of course. We will be up in the air in no time. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. After the boarding process, I settled into my seat, ready for the long journey ahead. The plane was filled with the hum of activity as passengers stowed their bags and the crew made final preparations. The flight wasn't exactly glamorous. I had way too many layovers. Which made the trip feel longer than it should have been. The in-flight movies were just okay, but surprisingly, the airline food wasn't as bad as I expected. I spent most of the time trying to sleep, watching the clouds drift by and wondering if the person snoring next to me was a professional. Tokyo Adventure and Family Hospitality I landed in Tokyo, and Hiroshi and his family were there with a big ol' Welcome Emily sign. It felt like a scene from a movie, the heartfelt greetings, bows, and all. They even gave me a cute little charm for good luck. Talk about hospitality. Staying at Hiroshi's house was like living in a Pinterest board. His family was warm and welcoming, and we would sit in their cozy sitting room. Sipping tea, chatting about life in Japan versus the States. Hiroshi's mom would share secret recipes and his dad cracked the funniest jokes. Even if I barely understood them. 
Exploring the city. We spent the next few days exploring the streets of Tokyo. Visiting Kyoto's historic temples and getting lost in Osaka's vibrant nightlife. Hiroshi introduced me to the best local spots for sushi, ramen, and little cafes where we spent hours gossiping. But there was always a quiet moment, too, like when Hiroshi's mom, Yuki, invited me into the kitchen one evening. Emily, let's make a cake. It will be fun, she said, rolling up her sleeves. I laughed, feeling a little unsure. I'm not the best baker, but I will try. Yuki laughed. No worries. I will guide you. We gathered the ingredients, and Yuki showed me how to sift the flour and mix it gently with sugar and eggs. The secret to a good cake, she explained. We stir slowly so it doesn't collapse. As the cake baked, the sweet smell of vanilla and butter filled the kitchen. Hiroshi and his dad wandered in, sniffing the air. Wow, it smells amazing in here, Hiroshi said. I pulled the cake from the oven. Once it had cooled, I spread some chocolate frosting over the top and sprinkled a little chocolate on it for decoration. Once it was ready, we all sat down to eat. Hiroshi's dad took a bite and smiled. This is the best cake I have ever had, Emily. I blushed, pleased with the compliment. Thanks, Yuki, for letting me help. Dinner with Yuki, Sukiyaki Feast the next day, Yuki invited me to help with dinner. Tonight, we are having sukiyaki, she explained. It's a Japanese hot pot dish. You will love it. I followed her instructions carefully, slicing the mushrooms and helping prepare the beef and vegetables. Yuki showed me how to simmer everything in a soy sauce-based broth, letting the flavors meld. As the sukiyaki cooked, we shared stories about our cultures. I told her about American apple pie, and she taught me how to prepare the perfect broth. When it was ready, we sat down to eat. Hiroshi raised his bowl and smiled. Emily, this is delicious. You have helped us make such a great meal. I smiled, feeling like I was really part of the family. Coffee time. After one of our hearty dinners, Hiroshi leaned back in his chair. Well, now it's coffee time, he said with a satisfied sigh. Yuki started to stand up to get the coffee, but I quickly interjected. I want to make the coffee tonight. I said. Yuki shook her head, smiling. No, no, I will make it. But I insisted. Please, let me. I really want to do this for you. Hiroshi smiled and said, All right, Emily, go ahead and make the coffee. It's your turn. I went into the kitchen, my hands a little shaky but determined. I ground enough beans for four cups, carefully measuring each one. Then boiled the water and poured it over the grounds. 
the rich aroma of freshly made coffee filled the kitchen. I added a little milk to each cup, just enough to smooth out the flavor, and stirred in the sugar to taste. When I served the coffee, Hiroshi took a sip and raised his cup. This is fantastic. Emily. Yuki added with a wink, I think we should make you our official barista. The farewell. Saying goodbye was the hardest part. Hiroshi's family had become like my own during my time in Japan. We exchanged promises to visit each other again soon. But as I boarded the plane to return to the States, I felt a mixture of gratitude and sadness. Back in States, I couldn't stop thinking about the unforgettable experiences. The laughter and the flavors of Japan. I would carry those memories with me forever. Japan, you stole a piece of my heart, and I'm forever grateful for the memories.